Hey, so today I had a quick change, last minute schedule interruption, and now I have some time on my hands, so I'm going to be working on my forehands. Something I've been working on since the beginning of this year. One of my goals for this year is to have a consistent 300 foot forehand tee shot. Um, so I'm gonna just see where I'm at. We've got a hole here that kind of has some footages marked out. I can just throw a bunch of different discs out there, see what kind of distance I'm getting, hopefully warm up there. And then I was thinking of playing a quick round and going backhands versus forehands just to see how consistent my forehands can be and how big is the gap between playing all forehands and all backhands. Um, and then maybe just build some more confidence in using those forehands for tee shots in upcoming events. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm a little bit warmed up now. Started with some slower speeds just to kind of get things going. Worked up to some fairways, which honestly I do not have the touch for yet. Um, I feel like short game and like full power forehands I'm getting comfortable with, but the in-between I'm gonna need to work on a lot this year. Uh, so we're going to walk out and see roughly how far I'm throwing these forehands in an open field. Okay, so after my warm-up throws, started throwing some 9 speeds, 12 speeds, and I'm not terribly disappointed. Um, Firebird, Force, came up just short of 300, which for me is not... Um, not bad considering I am still figuring out how to throw forehands. I was happy that I did manage to get three or four out past the 300 mark. Um, and the real nice thing is it was comfortable. It didn't seem like I was, you know, trying to do anything too crazy. So um, I think I'm more comfortable throwing the 12 speeds. I think that they. I don't know, something about the 12 speed rim gives me a little more confidence throwing them full power and not worrying about them, you know, turning over into a roller. So maybe I need to develop some more touch and work on some gap hits as my next priority. All right, so hole one is about 350 feet. It's kind of straight ahead. There's OB on the right. Um, if you are playing, I'm at Kelly Park, if you play here, you can play shorts or you can play longs. I'm playing longs because I want to see in a tournament setting what my forehand really can do for me versus the backhand. Some of the shorter positions are a little bit more reachable, so I want to test my forehand a little bit more. So anyway, we'll be playing no long baskets. So you're going to see these beautiful white mock sevens from uh, DGA, wonderful California-based company. Not playing to those ones, I'm playing to the galvanized ones behind them. So, uh, here we go. How's that for luck? First forehand landed in bounds, got a long putt, probably a layup backhands parts. All right, so hole two is about 350, well protected and elevated. I don't know if you can see it, it's not the white one, it's around the corner to the left. So forehand typically is the better line that I don't have the power. So I'm probably gonna be laying up for three with a good forehand shot. Backhand can sometimes sneak over there. 
We'll see. So, my back end I thought was going to be parked, but I tagged this tree trunk on the way into the green, so it died. Surprisingly, forehand, although it was not thrown as well, uh, managed to get pin high. So that's kind of encouraging, but look at that terrible elevated basket. At hole 2A here, 420 foot par 3 tunnel shot. It's a tough three when I'm throwing backhands. I'm assuming it's going to be near impossible with a forehand. We shall see. So those are actually both pretty bad tee shots, but I didn't hate the way the forehand was flying, so there's promise. So I actually threw about, I think it was four forehands on this hole because the first one wasn't quite right. And I threw the exact same shot three more times. There are two shots I feel like I need to have. The flat forehand that skips right, which I'm pretty consistent with. But the forehand flex line is something I need because sometimes you walk up to a tee pad and that is the only path down the fairway. Or sometimes you get off the fairway and that's the only way to save your par. So. I threw three more of the exact same shot each time trying to correct the angle a little bit more. Got to work on that. That was kind of cool. Just ran into somebody who recognized me from the commit channel and that's new. That hasn't happened before. So hopefully we can get more videos out and uh, have a little more impact on our local scene here. So hole three today might be the one that really shows the difference between my backhand and forehand. Um, Let's see, it's set at 648, par four. That distance is probably going to kill me throwing forehands. All right, that was my first major fail on the forehand. I did not account for the left to right wind on this hole. Once that thing turned over, it was never coming back. Uh, that should be fun. Don't have a lot of good options from here. Basket's really off to the left, not the white one, but way back behind that oak tree. And uh, forehand line is not there. So I think I'm basically just throwing a halfway pitch shot and hopefully I'll get a look from there for our saving par. That was lucky. All right, so that last hole, I should have had a pretty easy look at birdie from my backhand drive, which was solid and in the middle of the fairway. Caught the last tree coming in, had about a 70 footer, took the par. Forehand, even with my bad drive, my lucky out from that bad drive, did manage to save par. So that is saying something, I mean, that wouldn't have happened in January. So uh, yeah, here we go, hole four. Again, it's not the white basket. Where is it, here? It's not that one. It's the silver one that's back behind. No mandos on this hole.
All right, so honestly, that's probably one of the better forehand hyzers I've ever thrown. The main circle's edge for me on this hole, the forehand is almost miraculous. So let's we'll see if we can make this. All right, drain both of those putts. I'm going over to the backhand, which honestly gave it a good ace run, but not so happy about this long comebacker. At least it's for birdie. Let's we'll see if we can birdie it from both hand, forehand and backhand, that would be cool. Unbelievable. Birded it both ways. All right, this was very impromptu and my phone storage is almost full. So I'm just gonna keep playing and I'll do a couple of quick videos updating and maybe a video of the last hole just so you know how things went and where I ended up. But I think you can get a pretty good idea. Forehand's coming along, but it is not like the backhand yet. All right, hole 11 here at Kelly Park used to be kind of pick your poison. You could either throw a big backhand hyzer right-handed around those trees, or you could take a turnover shot or a forehand shot down this left side. But now we have a new Mando, which is awesome. Silicon Valley Disc Golf Club does a fantastic job maintaining our courses, putting in effort to not only keep them running, but improve them and constantly makes the game more fun for us as the local players here check them out svdgc.org um, you can check out the silicon valley disc golf club facebook page if you want to see what's going on leagues doubles triples if you want to donate if you want to be a member check it out i don't know if it's just because the wind is down today and normally it's super windy out here but i've never played this well at this course in my entire life now I'm about to go through what we call the gauntlet, which is, you know, things like triple mandos, you can see behind me, or a bunch of just over the top shots where you're really just trying to get a little bit lucky. However, with the wind being down, it might not be as bad as usual. So hopefully I can finish even or better. We'll see. All right, it happened. I got my first bogey of the round. Uh, forehand shot was trash. <laughs> Tried to do a little hyzer flip tunnel shot and I don't know how to do that yet. Uh, so I had to pitch out, took a four. All in all though, I'm more than halfway through this course and I just got my first bogey and it was the forehand bogey. So I'm okay with that. I'm actually, Hoping I can keep playing like this this weekend when I play uh, Emerald Hills Tournament. Hopefully it won't be windy. Once more, a very clear illustration of my limitations with the forehand. This hole actually shapes up pretty well for a forehand compared to the backhand. But that's my shot with the backhand just because I'm comfortable with it and I'm good at hitting my lines. This is where I am with the forehand because I'm not good at hitting my lines. All right, hole 16, it's about three, what? 325, it's kind of a blind shot. You gotta go up over those trees and then the field opens up and it's in that field right behind the row of trees. You don't wanna be short. If you throw it too long, not a big deal. You might not get a birdie, but you can definitely get par. If however, you come up short or hit a tree, it could be really nasty. So I'm hoping I can get a forehand over those trees. Ah! 
I did not get a forehand over those trees. Not the best lie here, but you can see the basket. There's definitely a way to get there. All right, hole 18. Somehow I have made it through this course playing forehand and backhand. My back is tired and sore and I'll probably be taking some ibuprofen later. But I am personally at my all time best score here playing backhands only, uh, period. Out of any round I've ever played here, I've never shot this well. So I'm sitting at seven down, bogey free, one hole left. Hopefully I can get through it without screwing up. Forehand, I am shocked that I am under par here. That's like a whole new revelation to me that if it's not crazy windy, I have enough control over my forehand that I can keep it in play, avoid OB, avoid the major danger, and get my par. Which when playing tournament rounds is important because there are some times when the backhand can get me a birdie, but it could also get me a bogey or double bogey. Whereas if I just need a par, I'm gonna throw the forehand and keep it in play. Feeling a lot more confident about that after playing this round. So, one more note. I have been working on my putting because my putting was trash and it was driving me crazy. Today, my putting has been hot. It's been on point. Um, maybe it's because I'm putting twice as much because I'm putting from my forehand lies and my backhand lies. Maybe it's because it's not crazy windy out here and when it's not windy, putting gets easier. I don't know. Either way, I'm enjoying it. Practice your putting. Commit to your putts. Hit those chains. If it misses, it misses. But you know what? It won't miss. All right, I managed to save a par after a less than stellar tee shot, but that's okay. New personal record on this course, which is amazing for me because I haven't hit any new personal bests on any courses anytime recently. So it was good to get out. I feel like I was playing well. See some of my practice coming into play and making a difference on the score sheet. So that was cool. Yeah, uh, anyway, hope this gives you a little idea of what it takes, you know, if you wanna actually learn how to do something new, you really have to put in the time and effort to make it happen. Only throwing forehands, you know, this course is 21 holes. So playing every hole backhand and forehand gives you a lot of forehand practice that you wouldn't get if you came out with friends and were just playing a casual round because you're going to be trying to score well and you're not going to show that throw that shot that you're not comfortable with so if you want to improve these are the kinds of things i think we have to do if you want to get better you got to commit to practicing and then see how it affects your scores when you get to those rounds where you have now more choices of what you want to do Thanks for watching. Hope to see you out here sometime soon. Um, if you have any comments you want to leave, maybe you could share what is the best way that you have found to improve at a specific skill. So what is it that you're currently working on or what is it that you were working on that you finally got a handle on and how did you do that? What did it take? What are some tips you can give the rest of us on how to improve in those areas? All right, bye.